Oh, thank you. It's good to see y'all as well. Yes, yes, doing good. <laughs> We're here. We made it through the storm here in Florida. And I'm so happy to see everybody. Thank you, Andrew. And if you would like to interact during the class, please feel free to unmute or you may type in the chat or whatever you feel more comfortable doing. Please do so. Let's see, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Hi, T. Lawrence, how you doing? Hi, good. That's good. I'm just going by the names that you guys put in there. So that's what I'm gonna call you by, unless you would like me to call you something else. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Let me know as soon as you see the mountains and the ocean. Then we'll go ahead and everybody should be in. I just gave a like one extra minute for everybody to get into the session. So just want to make sure we're good to go. Alrighty. Can everybody see the mountains? Okay, great, great. Lovely. All righty. Okay, so we are doing behavioral science week two. Yay, we made it. Okay, so exciting. So today we have just a few things to do um, as far as housekeeping with um, making sure that you all are aware that it when everything is due. And we had a few changes and I'm gonna put an announcement up in the actual LMS for each class just to let you know, hey, we have an extension on this and, and this thing going. So I'm just gonna explain it really quick. We had a pretty severe storm here in Florida, in case some of you didn't know. Uh, there's still a few places that are flooded, power outages. Some people don't have internet. Some people don't have a lot of things at this point. Some people don't have their whole house. Um, I thank God that I have everything um, here. We did have some power things and everything, but I'm glad everything's up and going again. Um, However, there are some people that don't have that stuff going yet. So they did do an extension for your week one assignment to where they're all due on Wednesday now. There is no, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Somebody said they're praying for Florida. I appreciate that. Is it Shade? Is that how I say that, Shade? It's Sadie. Sadie, see, I have an intern that her name was spelled the same way, but you pronounce it Sade. So I was like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so Sadie, thank you for asking. No problem, no problem. Um, but so what happens is that since some people don't have their power or something, there may be things that are going on extenuating at this point. Uh, so they're trying to get everybody an opportunity to get everything in um, by Wednesday. So usually what happens is, and we talked about this. One, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't know okay. I'm, on you. I'm on live too. I'm like, on live. oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's I'm okay. So we were talking right about usually weeks one through three, everything's due by Sunday. However, if there is an extenuating circumstance, you can request for an extension until Wednesday and you don't get the 10 points off. However, weeks one through three, if you don't request that extra extension, then there is 10 points off of everything that you turn in and there is never an extension on the um, the discussion post because it's an interactive assignment so there are no extensions on that however for this week only for week one week one assignments that were due yesterday on Sunday everything needs to be turned in by Wednesday and there's no 10 point penalty so if you can get everything, if you did it already, wonderful. Cause some of you aren't in Florida or in the surrounding states that may have been affected by the storm because of what it did, it went to Florida and it went on up to some other states as well. So just to account for that, they're really trying to make sure that everybody has enough time to get everything in, that they got their power back and all that good stuff. So 
it, it's only for week one stuff that was due yesterday on Sunday. You now have until Wednesday and you won't get an, a, a 10 point penalty. However, you have to get it all in by Wednesday. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about that? Oh, Benjamin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're gonna have that stuck in your head now. Does anybody have any questions about everything being due? Because week one, again, week one stuff that was due yesterday, Sunday, you now have until this Wednesday, two days from now, to get it in by midnight Wednesday. Ms. But if, if you don't get it in by Wednesday, then you know it, it doesn't count unless you email or text. Um, usually, you can text or put a message in the LMS and say, hey, I'm in Florida, I'm wherever, and I still don't have power, things like that, then we can talk about extending it any further. But they said that most people should be able to get everything in by Wednesday, the latest. And Miss Sadie, did you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to say to Benjamin, this is no ordinary love. Yeah, no ordinary love. That's right. Thank you, Zay. I appreciate it. <laughs> Just to get it out of your system. <laughs> it's been done. Thank you. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about the stuff being due? And then I just want you to keep in mind because I ask specifically if does, does that mean that your post, your original posts that are due on Wednesday, does that mean that they are extended and they are not? So the posts that were due, yes, everything in by Wednesday. So the posts that you're supposed to do for week two, that's due on Wednesday. You know how you do your original post by Wednesday and you do your reply by Sunday? It's still due by Wednesday. You still have to download the workbook for week two by Wednesday. You still have to do your original post for week two uh, discussion by Wednesday, okay? So all of week one stuff that was due yesterday by Wednesday and your post and your download. <laughs> for week two by Wednesday. <laughs> we got it. We got it. Any questions, anyone? Questions, questions. Okay, good. So I just wanted to make sure we got that under control. And I say weeks one through three, you usually have that extension because remember, we do not have an extension for week four, unless there is an extenuating circumstance, a weather thing, which I'm hoping we don't have one, even though there's another hurricane out there looking at us. Um, I'm hoping we don't have any more weather or extenuating things. However, there is no ex automatic extension for week four because at the end of week four, that Sunday, the next day you usually start a new class. So we, they don't want you to have compounding work from two classes. So everything is usually due by that Sunday of week four. Okay. So all of these extensions usually only go for week through, one through three. However, and I'll say this again, if you have an extenuating circumstance, people have had God forbid, car accidents. They've had wonderful births. <laughs> They've had all kinds of stuff. If you have a baby, a whole baby that you're having, we're not going to expect you to, you know, take, you know, come and throw things in while you're giving, having labor. Because believe me, I've done that. I've gotten an oil change. I had to get my oil change and my battery change when I was in labor. It's not fun. So we're not expecting you to do all of that. <laughs> But if there's something like I had to work late or I had to work a lot, that's usually not one of those things. But even if it is or it isn't, you have to, hi, Scott, you have to file a paper with the program director in order to file for the, the, extent, the extension. So you don't want to do all of that. Just get everything in by Sunday. Okay, if nobody has any questions, we are going to move on to our lesson for this week. So this week, we are covering time management. And I know some of you may say, why is time management important? Why would you think time management is important, especially within this particular degree, what we're doing here and everything that we talk about? Did you have a question, Scott, or are you just saying hello? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Sadie. Um, I think time management is important because um, we have to manage our time so that way we can meet deadlines, just like, um, like me personally, I'm in graphic design. 
Um, so like, it's really important. Like if a client gets their deposit in and they say that they have to meet a deadline by like, you know, like Wednesday, let's say, then I have to make sure that their project is finished by then because it's really important and it's professional. You have to be professional, you know? And exactly. So, so we're in school right now, we're learning to be working prof professionals, you know? So that's why time management is so important. Okay. Lady, that's right. You got to learn how to be professional. And it's better to learn it now than when you have a job and there are consequences that are involving your money. Right now, it's involving me saying, hey, make sure you get this in on time and hey, watch your, your grammar a little bit. We want to make sure you look good. All of that now. But you, we don't want you to have to go through all of that later. This is where we do the growing pains and all of that now. So as much as you can learn that now, that's what we want to do. And thank you, Miss Say. I appreciate it. Thank you, Scott, for saying hello. And I, have, I have a quick question. I want to know if my speakers are still being, uh, do they still sound warped? No, you sound fine. Uh, the last two uh, sessions, uh, they told me that I was sounding warped, so I tried to fix it. You remember we talked, okay. So remember when we started the other session um, last week, the first two times that you talked, you sounded fine. But at around the end, it started to break up. So I don't know if it's like, like other people are getting on and it's messing it up at a certain time but right now it sounds good i think it's i think it was a hardware issue okay yeah because i can hear you very good right now mr benjamin <laughs> okay so and i'm glad you said that um sadie because that is very true time management is one of those things that will carry you for the rest of your life it's going to be really important for you and yes if you're in graphic design you're going to need to make sure you stay on schedule. People have deadlines and all kinds of stuff for campaigns that they're doing or whatever they may need it for. It's not always something that you have to know. You just know that it needs to be done by this day. That's what you need to do. You know, so this week we're going to talk about time management and lots of students mentioned different tools that you use for time management and mention it as something being that they hope to gain from this class. I hope to get better at that. I hope to increase my understanding of how to improve in that area. And that makes sense for professionals, as we were saying before. But it's especially important in the entertainment industry where a lot of things that you do are on a timeline or have deadlines. And if you don't do things in a certain uh, time, then you could be losing money for yourself and the project that you're doing. So and that, that weighs heavy on your actual position. <laughs> now, if you're the producer, that's different. You could lose money from people that are investing. So we don't want to have to worry about things like that. How does time and creativity go hand in hand? So time management isn't just about meeting deadlines. It's also about creating the space in your life in order to practice your craft. So you wanna be able to make mistakes. You wanna be able to learn from them and grow from them and have the time in order to do that. It's also about making time for your priorities. Whatever priorities you may choose to have, it's about making time for your priorities as well. But unless you have strategies or a plan that works for you, it can be hard to carve out time to be creative. Would anybody agree? Yes. Yes. So time management and creativity really go hand in hand when you think about it. How has time management affected your creativity? Does somebody want to share? So I'm curious to see how time management plays a role in your creativity, if you've already felt the effects of it, or if anyone wants to share how they have personally felt the effects of it or seen how it has affected someone else, either how it's affected your creativity in a good way or a bad way, or maybe how you've learned from both of the different ways. Okay, go ahead, Sadie. So um, I feel like time management has affected my creativity in the past because um, at the time, like when I first started this, this class and stuff, or when I first started mm -hmm. degree, so I was not only in a relationship, but then I was also working a, a 12 hour a day job. And so like, it really affected me because like I had to manage my relationship, I had to manage my job. Um, and then I had to find the time to do schoolwork. And so my first 
whole month of school, like I was really behind for week two and three, but week four, I picked it up, thank God. Um, and I had to like figure out a way to like balance everything and then still find the time to, to be creative and do my graphic design because not only am I a working professional in graphic design, like as far as taking clients, but also um, I do graphic design for self as well. Um, mm-hmm. And so, so I, I try to take time to expand my creativity within my, my field of work. So it's just really hard to, to like figure that out, but I ended up figuring it out. But now, like, you know, I decided to take a break from that. So now I, I figured like, you know, I had to, I had to like, you know, figure out what I had to do in order to keep pushing forward and be the most focused because right now this is the most important thing to me is getting my degree. So I had to take time to like figure out like is this important is that important is that important no so like you know like the relationship that's not that important right now that can happen in any at any time you know um the job it was important because like I needed an income but mm-hmm. that specific job was not that important because in reality that wasn't a long-term thing so I had to cut the job off and I was like okay school this is what's important and now I'm building my life around my school now and wow. I'm building my life around my craft and do you is- feel better doing that Oh, I feel a weight lifted off of my shoulders. Absolutely. Okay. So it sounds like, and thank you so much for sharing, Sadie. It sounds like she was able to look at what was important and figure out her priorities, like we were talking about earlier, is kind of seeing what is helping me and what's not helping me right now and what's draining my energy and not giving me those rewards that I need. So remember last week we talked about rewards and all things like that. So it, it's really kind of important to think about that kind of stuff. Um, and setting your priorities so that you can carve out time for things that you need, things that you want, and then also to take care of yourself. So that's something important too. T. Lawrence, did you want to say something? I wasn't sure. Okay, I thought somebody, did anybody else want to share? Oh, okay, Mr. Andrew. Uh, I I have an eight-year-old daughter, so Mm -hmm. my time management is really important, and I really got to get creative, especially at times where I got classwork, and she Mm -hmm. has classwork, and I got to make sure she eat dinner, and like, you know, make sure she takes showers, all that stuff, so it it becomes a little bit of a task, but Mm -hmm. it's uh, now, well, the first week was a task because I, I mean the first month because you know my first month being online school is my first time but I wanted to prove to my daughter that it's never too late to go to school yeah and it's never too late to get your education she's eight but she has the mind of a 12 year old so <laughs> I have to figure out way like like now when I get off of this I'm gonna sit I'm gonna sit downstairs with her and we're gonna do homework block and our homework block is spaced out for an hour, an hour and a half. And then after the homework block, we do reading block. And then after reading block, we do creative block where we just like build Legos or watch educational videos. And then we get ready for, we get ready for dinner and, and wind down. So it's, it's, uh, it's tough, but it's, it's definitely worth it. Well, that is awesome. It sounds like you're already kind of getting a, a routine going so that you can Definitely. spend time with her, but you all are being productive during that time, but also right. expressing yourselves creatively. So that's pretty awesome. Pat on the back, sir. Come on, pet it, pet it, pet it. Good job, that's so exciting. You know, a lot of people do have all of that going on, but they have not yet figured out a routine in order to kind of get everything in that needs to be in. And it'll change sometimes, but the good thing is that you are thinking about those different aspects of, the things that need to be done, the things that you want to be done, and the things that are good just to spend time together, right? Right, right. So that is awesome. I mean, I'm telling you, everybody is not there yet, okay? (laughs) So just keep that in mind. That was awesome. Uh, 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 Lauren, you had your hand up? uh, Oh, I'm sorry, Benjamin. uh, uh, Part of uh, time management and creativity is Knowing the difference between a creative hobby and a creative uh, talent, there's a difference. And I like playing guitar, but I'm never going to make a living off of it. Writing, I, I I believe I can do it. So 
You okay. can waste a lot of time between differentiating between a hobby and skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes it's it's about how much how much passion you have towards it as well. Like, what are you passionate about as well? And it, honestly, you may not sound like everybody else, but maybe somebody will like it, you know, because honestly, and I give the example of Macy Gray all the time because she doesn't have the traditional voice. She really does it. And a lot of people told her, no, you need to just be quiet. But her voice has has given life to so many different songs and, and different words that other people they relate to and they love and all these other things. So sometimes it may not sound like everybody else, but if somebody may like it. So that's just something to think about as well. So T. Lawrence, did you have something you wanted to share? Well, yes, I would say online, being online was stressful. So do you well, still I, feel I think, like that? I think it got a little bit better yeah <laughs> my first time yeah yes yes in the first month you know that's why they have that course for the first month so that everybody can kind of get into the rhythm of everything you get used to how you can schedule your time and I know Sadie said that that first month was like whoa but that's why they have that course for the first month to really help yes. students get acclimated to the online environment and you know, some for some people it's easier than others, but usually you kind of get into the the rhythm of everything. You start understanding how your schedule works, what you need to change, put in, take out, and all that. So I'm glad you said that, Lawrence. I'm so glad. <laughs> thank you, and thank you, Benjamin, as well, because that's welcome. very true. <laughs> so uh, Walker Jones says I've been rushed to get some photos out in time and made the photos turn out less than ideal. I didn't have time to make them look the way I wanted. So that's that's something too. When you when you have a, something that you're doing that's creative, it's a part of you. So when it doesn't come out the way that you like, it just it has a strange feeling that that follows it. Like I was not ready. I, this is not what I wanted to do, but I know I have to present something. So here it is. So that's what it's all about. Yes, it's a strange feeling. Yes. <laughs> and even if people like it, you're still just like, I didn't, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> it's kind of like when, I don't know if you all have ever seen a, 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 like a youngster create something and you're like, oh, that's a great dragon. It's not a dragon. It's, it's a dinosaur. And you're like, okay. Or it's something completely off. Like it's not a dra dragon. It's SpongeBob. You're like, what? <laughs> that is not <laughs> And you feel bad because you shouldn't have said it was a dragon, but it's like that feeling like you wanted it to look like something else. Other people like it, but it's not what you wanted. So it's just odd. It's just a strange feeling. Thank you, uh, Walker. But um, I want you guys to kind of think about that. What does it mean to, um, to put time management into the realm of creativity? So as we move into that understanding, I want you all to think about distractions, okay? So when you start to think about distractions, there are all kinds of distractions that can get in your way. There's barriers that we have that affect our time management. Uh, and when you think about your time, what are some of the things that you think will get in your way that prevent you from making the best use of your time? Does anyone wanna share maybe some of the distractions that they have or the strategies that they use to manage their distractions? I know some of us have, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> oh, great. We have Brittany and gospel. we'll do gospel first. Go ahead, gospel. Um, well, uh, for me, and I'm just being honest, and I know it's just life, but it's the kids. You know, that's the biggest distraction. Um, and oh, sometimes it really be not even just the kids, but adults as well, like, um, or just the people just around you in general, when they see you trying to study or do anything, and then they don't care to interrupt you for whatever reason. <laughs> and it's just like, it's hard for me to sometimes blank that out, but I end up trying my hardest to tune them out and keep focus but then I'm like okay let me take my break and be attentive to some you know to them as well my ki the kids or whatever okay. other responsibilities I have to attend to well that's um, thank you kids are one of those big things that can kind of be a little bit of distraction and thank you for sharing and gospel you wanted to share as well 
Am I saying it right? Hello. Is it gospel? Uh, yeah, that's okay. That's that's my mentor group. So I just okay. never changed it. But my name is Jalicia. Okay, and, hi, Jalicia. Uh, <laughs> and I will, I will say mine. It, mine was work because I used to like go in at seven or something like that. But I stopped picking up. But this class was way easier, and I got like so much more time. I guess it's because it's on motivation, and I'm like, it like turned my drive up. Mm. And I was done with my work, and I was ready for the rest. And I'm like, where is it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have to figure out the flow, and um, I got it now. So I'm good. It, it was hard good. at first. And I'm glad you said that. I, um, I see y'all. I gotta see your name. <laughs> oh, but you said gospel. <laughs> but I'm glad that you said that because a lot of people do have work that becomes a part of that distraction. And it's a necessary thing, though. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna look on YouTube all day or whatever. It's something that you have to do, but sometimes not turning that off. Is, is something else that goes mm -hmm. on. So we have, um, and also Andrew agrees with Brittany. Is it Brit Brittany? Do I say Brittany or Brittany? Brittany. Okay. So Andrew agrees with Brittany about the kids being a distraction. And um, Sadie, did you want to share something? Thank you for that. Yeah, I feel like I'm still managing like my distractions, but I feel like I manage them well because, okay, so usually like my distractions are like, of course, like I'm a paid broadcaster, so I go live and stuff. So sometimes like I might get a little distracted by like the comments like in my live or whatever, you know, but I'm like learning to like, if, if like I just like, you know, block that out, you know, like I'm going to still like my fans are still going to be there and stuff, you know. Um, and like, I can still like do that, you know, but still like, you know, do what I have to do and like, just focus on that, you know, so I'm learning how to block that out. Um, as far as my other distractions, I basically cut off all of my other distraction distractions. So like my other distractions, was, like my relationship. I know you did. I heard uh, you say you cut some things out. I was like, she is not playing. <laughs> yeah. So like, so like I really, but, but this is how I really manage my distractions. Okay. You guys. So this is what I'm doing now. So my new system is like at the beginning of the week, I try to knock out as much work as possible. So that way throughout the rest of the week, my time will be freed up to do the rest of the things that I need to do. Like, um, as far as like managing my business, um, my graphics business, and as far as like managing my, my broadcasting, because like my broadcasting pays me and my business pays me. So at the end of the day, I have to like, you know, I have to do everything that's important first, which is like my, my schoolwork is the most important because if I don't do my schoolwork, I'm gonna get kicked out of class and I'm not gonna be able to get my degree. So that's like the main thing that's in my mind, you know? So I get that stuff done at the beginning of the week and then towards the end of the week, that's when I'll do like all of my, my actual like work, you know, which is like my broadcasting and, and my, and my, you know, designs and stuff. So that's kind of like, I kind of made a system for it. That's awesome. But I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. So like nothing's perfect, you know, like I'm still getting it together, but right now that's where I'm at with it. And the thing is, I'm glad you said that because it is a process. It's it's a process of kind of perfecting where you want things to go. But the, we all know that as soon as we get everything where it wants to go, something changes. <laughs> so it's a continual process of getting that done and really kind of understanding what we need and how we need to get everything done. And so Benjamin also says that... Um, uh, that he that I he said I get insecure about my quirkiness uh being misconstrued okay what do you mean by that sir uh I think uh, most people have that creative spark in them tend to act a little bit different or word things a little bit differently and have maybe odd, not odd mannerisms, but just, uh, just different. Uh, different. yeah, just, uh, I mean, not crazy or anything, but it's just that different way of self-expression that lots of the time, my father included, <laughs> uh, non-creative people don't really understand. So sometimes I'm afraid to let my personality out. Um, yeah. so I think that's what, that's my biggest hindrance between me and like, uh, but I'm going for it this time around. And you know what, Benjamin, that's okay. 
it's okay if you you have quirkiness or you're a little bit as long as you're not hurting anybody it's fine because i'm gonna tell you right now miss angel does not like act like everybody else i'm not like every other professor and i'm okay with that i'm okay because if you don't like my live session, you can go to somebody else's live session. I, you know, it's not forced upon you. I don't push myself on people. However, hopefully you'll get to a place where you get comfortable with your quirkiness or your different things that you do, or I call them my idiosyncrasies, you know, all the little things that I do. I'm okay with them now. <laughs> Honestly, I'm at, a, I'm at a point, if you don't like them, then you ain't got to look, baby. You know, so that's <laughs> That's the way I feel right now. It is what it is going to be. That's it. So if, if somebody doesn't like it, then, you know, that's them. But as long as you're not hurting anybody, that's the thing about it. Now, you can't go around, you know, hitting people and punching people and thinking that's quirkiness. That's just rude. But if it's normal things, like that's just the way you are, that's fine. Somebody going to love it. I'm telling you right now, somebody going to love it. So you don't have to worry about it. And Walker Jones says... I'm weird as hell and I love it. <laughs> so thank you, Walker. <laughs> he has embraced his uh, different qualities and we appreciate that. And it's not easy. I understand that it's not easy. It's one thing for me to say it. It's another thing for you to feel your feelings that you have. And I would never want to discount anybody's feelings. But like I said, there's nothing that that I do that's hurting anybody. So if somebody doesn't like it, then they don't have to look, they don't have to listen, they don't have to deal with it. That's your business. But I try to be kind to everybody. That's one of the things. I just ask that people try to be kind to each other. And uh, you know, as long as you're not hurting anybody, you're fine. And Andrew says, yes, it is. And gospel, I'm keep saying gospel. You <laughs> got what your name in there. Says weird is good, it is. Weird is the new normal. Weird is the new normal and normal is the new weird. So that's, <laughs> that's the way it is. You got to have some quirkiness now. <laughs> yes, Sadie? Yeah, I just want to add on to that um, for, um, for Benjamin. Like, don't feel like, you know, weird about your like insecurities and stuff. Like, it is what it is. A lot of people, a lot of people actually have those, you know, you would be surprised me as like a broadcaster, like I'm going live all the time and I'm having to um to get adjusted to just being myself because that's actually what people like you know people don't like um you know when you're like faking to be something that you're not you know at the end of the day like you would be surprised by who actually vibes with you just exactly how you are you know so um like don't feel weird about that at all like um I go live and be weird all the time you know like it's you know, okay like, and it's embraced at this perfect, point you know like yes. but it is it is it is, and it, it, thank you, and it is, it's embraced at this point, and if whoever doesn't embrace it, then don't be around them, don't let nobody steal your sunshine, you hear me, <laughs> you just keep on shining, <laughs> that's what I tell people all the time, nobody gonna steal my sunshine, so um, Gaswa also says, I'm weird, but it makes me special, and I stand out, which is true, you're gonna stand out, and while you're trying to create and find your your ways and your all of that stuff i want you all to be able to find who you are your voice be comfortable with it and then also make sure that you're using that time productively so whatever it is that you need to do make sure make sure you're using your time productively if you know that you only have two or three hours we're not going to get on TikTok or youtube or something because you know you know that it'll be like three hours later. You're like, oh wait, because <laughs> all of those little videos add up to be a lot of time at the end of the day, if that's what you're doing. I have had so many patients and so many students say, I was just on there for two minutes. It was two hours. <laughs> so before you know it, the time is gone. So we want to make sure we're understanding our our time and what we're available for, and also our peak performance time. So you see peak performance time up there. And what does that mean? One idea to consider when trying to make the best use of your time, especially for peak performance time, is what does peak, peak performance time mean? So in the workbook, it's defined as the time of day when you're your most productive and have high energy. Okay, so that's what it's described as. Gospel says being um, you helps you tackle obstacles and finding your speed in life. Yeah, it does. It really does. If you're trying to go at somebody else's speed, you're not going to get there in your time. You got to go at your own. And honestly, you got to be yourself because like I tell my 
students and my patients and everybody else. Everybody else is taken. So you need to go and be yourself. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your peak performance time? Now that you know that it's when you're, you're most productive and you're high energy, how would you describe your peak performance time? Let's see. So how many of you would feel like you, uh, you're not really a morning person <laughs> and you're kind of annoyed by the people that wake up bright and early in the morning, ready to tackle the world. How many of you would say that, that you're not really, a, okay, Walker Jones says I'm not one of those people and they, they annoy me. And Gospel, what were you gonna say? I wanted to say I, I work better like during the evening and night. It's like, that's when my creativity flows like at, at night, so. Okay. Okay. I have to find my speed and that that it was. Okay, cool. Walker says I'm jealous of, of morning people. <laughs> Brittany says mornings and evenings are the best time. Sadie says I wake up with so much energy, but I wake up late. And T Lawrence says, me too. Let's see. Oh, that you're not a morning person. I get it. Brittany says, I love to I love my sleep. I'm a morning person. Can you believe it? Because <laughs> it's six something and I'm still, I still have a lot of energy, but I am, I'm a morning person. I wake up early. I wake up like 4 35 o'clock. Just excited. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> no coffee. I don't need coffee. No, I don't need none of that. <laughs> Just happy. <laughs> Why are you so happy? Don't be questioning my happiness. <laughs> so that's just the way it is some people just wake up like that Benjamin says I'm a night owl Trevor says yeah I'm jealous of morning people extra when I see them being all energetic yeah that's me I can do everything in the morning <laughs> I can do everything all day like it doesn't even matter to me I don't know if it's having children or what it is I could be sleeping haven't slept in two days or a whole day and I'm still like this and then at some point it'll just hit me and I'm just like tired <laughs> and it's been two days since I slept so I don't know what it is but I'm not gonna question the blessing so I'm just gonna keep rolling Andrew says I'm most productive uh in the a.m like 4 a.m um to 5 but I'm a night owl too between 12 and 2 I'm sorry 12 and 3 a.m so that's cool it's kind of like you know what I was describing months all day so that's pretty neat. Would you, okay, would you um, say that, okay, we know that some of you are morning people. Some of you say that you're night owls. And some of you say like you're somewhere in the middle, right? So which one would you say works best for you? The late evening or the mornings? Be I ask because there are certain areas within those peak performance times that have been described. Um, as, as areas of creativity or areas of productiveness or just areas of high energy. And they have been sectioned out as such. So we can all be so different. And because we all are so different, some of us um, have the most energy at a certain time and some of us get the most work done during that energy or maybe after that energy goes away. The interesting thing about it is that there are many different types. Um, there are different times of the day that you're creative versus when you have energy. So being energetic doesn't necessarily mean that you are creative at that moment. And uh, they may not match up those two particular things. And you could be creative during a low energy moment and vice versa. So that's something to think about. You could be really tired and think of a, an idea for a book or a song and it just pops in your brain. Like you don't have to have all of the energy to get that kind of stuff done. So that's what says I'm like, I'm like that when I talk about God and I can go for days. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. And just says early mornings, my brain feels like it's firing on all center in all cylinders, which is cool. And then um Let's see, Sean says graveyards all day. So you're a night person, Sean? This is my creative kick in at 3, 6 a.m. <laughs> Are you a night person, Sean? Okay. <laughs> well, that's awesome. 
According to Dan Peek's research, um, there are three different types of people. So the first type that he describes are larks. So it's kind of like a bird, it's a lark, um, which is an early bird. And it reports as being alert early in the mornings and feeling most productive um, at work a few hours before they eat lunch. So that sort of morning time and right before they have lunch, that's when they report being more productive for the larks. These people are, mo are most creative in the afternoon to the e early evening time when they have um, less energy and are less analytical, which makes for a good time to brainstorm and be creative and things like that. So he sectioned it out to where, yes, you have energy and you're up in the morning. However, he believes that the creativity starts in the afternoon or the early evening once some of that energy is out. So that's how he does that. Does anybody feel like that describes them? So Trevor says, I get the 4 a.m. creative burst. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Sadie says, I just realized my messages were on direct. I got all of your messages. No, they weren't, they were everybody, I think. Biscuits and gravy. Wait, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. No, they were everybody. Oh, okay. Benjamin says, uh, last night I decided to register for the 333 Screenwriters Challenge. What? Congratulations, Benjamin. Although I've never written a screenplay, worst that can happen is that I'll show. Exactly. Why not? Y'all remember not to tell yourselves no before other tells you, okay? Don't, don't give yourselves a no. If somebody, if you don't get a yes, then you don't get a yes, but at least you tried. You're definitely not going to get a yes <laughs> if you don't try, <laughs> right? If you just sit around wondering, nobody's going to give you anything for your, for your private thoughts. We don't know what you're thinking. So that's good. Sadie, did you have something to say? Oh, uh, Gospel says, congratulations, you got this. Benjamin. Um, I just wanted to say that that was funny that Benjamin said the that he was doing a 333 screenwriter challenge because I have a 333 tattoo. Look, you guys, on my- Oh, that's my so cool. <laughs> you got that's, support right there. <laughs> like, that's my angel number. <laughs> that's funny. That's so ironic. That is awesome. That is so cool. Well, Deanna says, I want to try it out that's so cool you can try everybody can try i'm so excited for you guys let's see the next one that we have are the owls and they're night owls which is just why they're owls and they report being more alert around 6 p.m and experience the most productive work in the late evening so, however, these people are most creative in the mornings, he believes. Again, because they are less analytical in the morning, that is the time that they tend to, to have ideas flow easier through their brains and like come out with brainstorming and all of that. How many of you feel like you may be night be owls? So Walker says that's him. Okay, Sadie says, I feel like I'm a night owl. Okay, you're an owl. Cool. And let's see. Aswell says, okay, you're an owl too. That's, that's awesome. Parker says, I'm up at 2 a.m. editing most nights. See, okay, well, it works out for you because that's what he says. He says, the mornings are the times that you'll be more creative. So if you are most alert at 6 p.m. or around dusk, late evening, then you're gonna, he says, you're gonna be more creative in the morning. So Walker agrees with that. That's awesome. Next, we have the third birds. So the third birds are the rest of us and are a continuum between the larks and the owls. So we are usually, uh, the third birds are most usually most alert around mid morning and most creative around early evening. So mid morning, that would be, would be like nine, 10. And early evening would be like five, no, about six, seven you know, around that time. Okay. Benjamin says, happy hour birds. <laughs> I don't know what that means, Benjamin, but it sounds fun. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> Anybody a happy hour bird? 
Brittany says only when yes. I get insomnia. Okay. Does somebody agree? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So how many do you feel like you don't quite fit into the first two examples and maybe you're around the middle? So it looks like we have a couple of people, Brittany and Benjamin, maybe they're around the middle parts where the third birds. So now that we know kind of more information about the peak performance time and it is important to kind of start paying attention to those times of day when you feel more creative um, and when you feel more productive or notice that you have high energy kind of seeing if those match up with you being creative or if you're one of those people that are more creative when maybe some of that energy is out and you can you're less analytical and less kind of on top of it and you're just creating things and you're not talking about it or shooting it down before it even comes out that kind of thing and then, then decide what you will do with those times of day that you are more creative and how you will move forward with it okay so that's what we're thinking about next what do you do with your free time? That's the next question. When you have free time now, what do you do with that free time? And are you able to find where the free time is within your day? That's one of the big things that we have to kind of think about. Do I know when I'm free during the day or do you not? Another tool for finding the time to create and kind of making the best time for things and, and really understanding what you have available when it comes to being creative in your schedule is a fixed commitment calendar. So has anybody ever heard of a fixed commitment calendar? Harold says he's a third bird. Thanks, Harold. Just was able to see that. Thank you. So she says, I create in my free time. Gospel says, I create content and flyers for my business. Awesome. Or in stages or find ways to make money. I know that's right. Gospel says my free time is at work. Brittany says depends on what I want to continue being productive. Want to okay and give my mind a rest. So sometimes you do need a rest, Brittany. That's a really good point. If you've never heard of a fixed commitment calendar, let me explain what this strategy is about because some people see a schedule and immediately think, I don't want to try it. It's just too much. It's just, I, no thanks. So I'm a creative. I like to free flow, <laughs> which we're all creative. Like, <laughs> well, I am. Everybody in this class pretty much is not everybody in the world. But, and I can understand what that feels like having to put things in the calendar and schedule your creativity, like seriously. But we want to just think about it. Let's give it a chance. Let's give it a, let's let it marinate for a few minutes. A fixed commitment calendar is intended to help you think about how you use your time and develop the habit of thinking ahead. That's it. We don't want to take your creativity and, and, and strangle it or anything like that. What we want to do is allow you to see where you can be more creative during your day. And maybe where you have the time to kind of jot down some of those things that you think about whenever you think about it, how you can take the time and kind of jot it down when you know you have those openings in your schedule. That's it. It helps to identify the activities you absolutely have to complete. And these are your fixed commitments like work, sleep, eating, appointments, things like that. You want to identify those things. And then thirdly, once you've considered your fixed commitments, the things you have to do, you can see where the free time is for the remaining things, that the things you may want to do, the things that you know you're passionate about, where you can express yourself uh, creatively, you know, have time to do that. It can help you calculate. Oh, we said calculate. It can help you calculate how much available time you have in a week. So especially for those of you who were thinking you need to relax or you, because you know that you, you know, you, you don't know where your free time is, you constantly feel stressed or things like that, because who knows uh, when you can have a time again to be free or you don't know when you can be relaxed. So this can really give you some perspective into how much time you really have so that you can decide what you want to do with it whatever it may want, whatever you may want to do. So Brittany says, depends on, I want to continue. Okay, I got it. So we're going to think ahead. 
We're gonna identify the commitments. And then we're gonna calculate the available time. So that's the whole point of this fixed commitment calendar. And whew, I know it looks like a big, you know, task, but it really isn't. I just want you to think about it for a minute. This is an example of a calendar, a fixed commitment calendar from this week's um, workbook. So I can't stress to you enough that this is not intended to be a rigid schedule. It is not. Um, it looks like, well, you can, you know, kind of get it to go in to look like the stuff that you're doing for the week. And it, it does, it's not going to look the same every week or anything like that. But at least for this week that we're doing it for the class, you can write down, you know, what you have the next week coming. So I know some of you may have different schedules every week, so don't worry about that. And I want you to, I don't want you to think that you have to follow exactly in order what you put into this fixed commitment calendar and, and that's the only way you're gonna have effective time management. No, this is just a scope so that you can understand, hey, for this week of the week two assignments, this is how much time I had and wow, look at all the time I had available or wow, I could have moved this or took less time for that and I would have had more time to relax or do whatever it is that you need to do. Again, it's just to get you thinking ahead on your commitments and your priorities and then be able to focus on that free time you have available. And this is an example for you to see where those free times can be in blue. So you see all the places in blue? Those are where the free times are for this particular person for this example calendar. And it may be different from week to week, like I said, of course, but this gives you a snapshot of what you may have coming. And this person has 40 hours available for this week. So you see how they, you see how they put in everything. I mean, sleep, get up, work, and the computer parts where I guess they were on the computer or maybe they were doing some work on the classwork on the computer. And then they have a lunchtime and work and then they're free from four to five. And then you have another one, I'm sorry, from four to six. And then you have another one free from seven to 10. So just thinking about that, and, and it's not the same on every day, as you can see. It's not going to be the same each day, but at least you get a good idea of it. The next page on the workbook, you'll see that you're going to watch the transition at this part. So before we even get to filling in the fixed commitment calendar, we want to spend some time brainstorming what requires your time currently. Like, what are you currently doing? what commitments you have for this week, which would be on the left side. So that's all those fixed commitments, work, school, taking the kids somewhere, spending time with kids, you know, getting food, taking a bath, whatever it is that you need to do, because we all need to do those things. Um, these are the things that you have to get done. And once you've made a list of that, then you want to really think about, okay, this is what I have to get done. And then the next column over will be what you want to do. So you're gonna put in the second list your want to do. So maybe you wanna paint, maybe you want to write more, maybe you want to um, start recording videos so that you can have a library of them when you start to post and you're not you know, feeling really pressured to get the next video out every week. Maybe you want to start a YouTube channel, you know, things like, but people, they, they will start a library of videos so that they can literally post one every week. They may have like 10, 15, have them ready so that once they announce their YouTube channel or whatever, yes, Sadie, you see what I'm saying? This is what I'm here for. <laughs> so Sadie said, I never thought of that. You can do that. And I say that because, you know, I have my own thing with my um, mental health stuff, but you develop a library of videos, 10, 15 of them, so that every week you start posting, people are used to it, but things can come up. So in case something happens, you're not like, oh, I gotta get a video out. No, you already got your video done, you get it out. And you just keep going, getting as many in the library as you can, you know, as much as you can. So that, that's something to think about, okay? So you said school, work, broadcasting in that order. Okay, that is smart. Thank you. 
I'm going to start doing that. I hope you do. I hope you all do. And please let me know, you know, even if you're not in the class, just shoot me over a thing saying, hey, Ms. Robinson, please watch my video. I'll be happy to watch them. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be my pleasure. Benjamin says, Sadie, what city are you in the small screen? Oh, I think he wants to know where you, um, you're broadcasting, Sadie, Benjamin at. Uh, Gospel says, it's easier that way. I like it. Yes, it is easier that way. Yes, I'm excited. So y'all let me know. But I just want you to think about it. And this is how you're going to do it. You're going to do your commitments on the left and your want to do's on the right. Okay. So that's how we're going to get that done. And so when you look at this in the workbook, you'll see that it has the calendar and you're just going to fill it out. And you can either put all the little ex explanations for things like work, school, homework, whatever you want to put in there. Or you can take it a different way and you can put available, not available. And then at the end of it, you'll count up all of your availables and that will be the time that you put, I mean, sorry, your, uh, yeah, your availables. And that'll be the time that you put in the bottom for your, um, your total time that's, that you're available. So you see in the simple one that we have now, we have one available and one not available. And then we have some Z's. The Z's, you are not available. The not available, you're not available. <laughs> so she'll just uh, add up all the availables and make sure you put that amount in that box down there. You know how it works with the workbook. If you don't have one of the boxes completed the way it's supposed to, we have to take off the points. Well, so y'all don't know. I don't. Y'all know I don't like to take off points. It hurts my heart. Poor heart. So we don't want to do that. So we want to make sure that we get all of these boxes filled out the way they need to be, and then we can move forward. So Sadie says, I'm in Seattle at the moment, and I've been based out of California for the last six years. I just got here. Oh, congratulations, Sadie. So once you look through here, this calendar, this fixed commitment calendar is on page five of the workbook. You're welcome. <laughs> you can fill it out with whatever you choose to, either available or not available, like I said, or you can put in there school, work, uh, homework, kids, what, whatever you need to put in there. And then the ones that say free, those are going to be your free time that you add up and put at the bottom where it says available time. So, but the main idea that I want you to realize is this a visual way to see your remaining time each week after filling out those fixed commitments then you um then we're looking for you to add all these boxes up so that you can understand what your free time is each week like that's the big kicker you want to do that anybody have any questions because it's going to go right there at the bottom once you're done anybody have any questions no? Okay. So now we're going to talk about creating space. And then, of course, you get to decide what priorities do you fill into the available hours, whether you have 10 hours or 30 hours. It's the, it's the real intention of the fixed commitment calendar, just so that those free hours that you have, you have available, you decide what you're going to do with them. So that we, again, we're trying to make sure we're, we're being productive the time that we do have okay and we talked about earlier how you have a lot of things going on in your schedule and this and that and we just want to make sure that we use that time as wisely as possible so are you going to see those hours as space to create or to work on a project or to master a skill or it's up to you, whatever you want to see it as, it's up to you, but just making sure that you understand what you have to work with, that way you know what you can do with it. But um, what usually happens is one or two things. Students realize that they have a lot more time than they originally thought, or they realize that they don't have enough time to do all the things that they want, and they have to decide how they want to kind of Think about their priorities, like Sadie was talking about earlier. If you can, adjust things so that you can feel more um, availability to do the things that you want to do or relax or something. Or you can look forward to those spaces that you do have so that you can do what you need to do within those spaces. Because some of us have very fixed schedules. You know, you have a certain amount of things that you have to do. You can't do anything about it. And then you got your school because that's what you're looking forward to to build your future. And this is just what you got. So when you have that happening, 
it's it's always good to provide some perspective on this may be my schedule for now, but it won't be forever. So I'm going to do what I got to do now so that I can do what I want to do later. And that's one of the big things that we have to think about, especially when we're going to school, we're doing all these big things. And this has been my motto for my life. <laughs> because when you have so much to do and you get a little tired, you, you get look forward to those moments that you do have. And you understand that this isn't going to be my schedule forever. And I may not want to be able to do everything I want to do now, but I'm going to do what I have to do so that I can do what I want to do. And I really want you all to think about that. I tell my, I tell my kids that too. <laughs> like, you know what? We're going to do what I want to do. <laughs> They've gotten used to it. So we just got to look out for that little monster called procrastination. Procrastination. I don't know why I get such a cute song. I like it though. <laughs> So along with your free time also comes the opportunity for procrastination. So there are six types of procrastination to think of. <laughs> Thank you, Sadie. Benjamin says, makes me think of that painting of melting clocks from, da yeah, Salvador Dali. Yes. Oh, God, so she has it bad. So it's rough when you know you have procrastination and it, it's a little rough. So there's six types that we need to look out for. Lurking, lurking around. So we have the, first we have the dreamer. And this type of procrastinator, they have big goals that rarely turn into actual specific plans, but they got a lot of stuff that they think about. So that's some, something that you want to look out for is being the dreamer. We have the, the worrier. And this person focuses more on problems and solutions. And because of that, they may not get things done. The defiers, they don't like feeling controlled by deadlines and expectations. They're like, man, I just want to get things done, man. You know, like <laughs> just really chill about everything. They don't want to have that pressure. So sometimes the defiers can get in their own way with procrastinating because of that. The overdoers. And these people are classified as having a tendency to overcommit and then they eventually burn out because they've committed to too many things and they can't get everything done. And they just feel in, unable to do that. And then we have the perfectionists and they put things off for fear of it, of making a mistake doing it or it not coming out right. So we talked about a little, that a little bit earlier. You got these deadlines, it's not gonna be the way you want it, but you still gotta get it out. So the perfectionists will be very, very stressed over that. And then we have the crisis maker. And they seem to be motivated by the last minute adrenaline rush. Like, I only have three hours, but I got to get this done. Ah! And they feel like <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> Rudy says, OMG, all of me. <laughs> okay. <that's, laughs> they feel like they do even better job because they have that push of the last minute that makes them feel more creative. So that's something else to think about. Do any, I'm, wonder if any of you all feel like you identify with any of these and if you do which one so Sadie says I think um I started out as a crisis maker okay yeah that's a lot of people especially creative people they feel like if they have that pressure behind them they can do it that's what says that's me see yep there's one in every family Benjamin says <laughs> yes there is so when you think about all of this, procrastination can lead to you feeling overwhelmed. The task projects and the personal expectations can just feel like they're just too much at some point. So sometimes the problem is not forgetting, but feeling overwhelmed <clears throat> by all the things that need to be done. <clears throat> so procrastination isn't about forgetting all the time. It's just not starting because it's a feeling of overwhelm, being overwhelmed. Big projects can be overwhelming to many of us, especially when we think that we need to get it all done in one big chunk. You know, have you ever felt like that? And Sadie says, yes. Yes. Yeah, I've grown to enjoy the pressure. Okay. And let's see, Glenn, Glenda, is it Glendalyn? Did I get it right? I'm definitely a perfectionist. Awesome. Okay, it's good that you know what you are. That way you know what you need to work on. Some things, okay, great. I did get it right, yay. And he learned, says, yes, I do. Okay, so perfectionist maybe somewhere in there. Okay, 
and understand the overwhelmness. I get it. Mm -hmm. Tiana says, yes. If you are overwhelmed by the things or the all the ideas and things and projects that you have to do, a lot of us will procrastinate and put it off. Why? Because we can't we can't decide where to start or what needs to be done first because this feels like it's just too much. And what do I do first or next? So we think about it and it's a good way to really put in the idea of breaking down tasks. So one of the best ways that we can reduce stress or anxiety about this is by breaking down our task into manageable chunks. So what, what will this project kind of look like if you have a certain project, if you break it down into chunks? What step do I need to do first, next? How do I move forward? What do I do after I do this step, you know, we think about those kinds of things and that's how we get those things done. If we can take our work and break it down into small steps, then we can reduce the feeling of feeling overwhelmed and then we are more likely to get started. So instead of thinking I have to finish a three-day campaign for a company and it needs to be done in four days, how do I, I need to get it done. I need to, instead of thinking I have to finish for three day uh, campaign, it's I have to draw up a proposal. And then next I have to start um, getting some of my, my people together to, to present everything. And then next we are gonna start working on the graphics for it. And then we've gotten the graphics approved. Now we're gonna put it into, whatever it's taking it into chunks breaking it down into steps so that you're not thinking I need to do all of this stuff that I can't hold. Instead, it's I need to do this and then I'll do that and then I'll do this and maybe a little bit of that, sprinkle a little of this on there. And that's, that's how we're, we're doing it. We're going to break it down. And yes, you learn says overwhelmed. I'm feeling overwhelmed is a lot. And Gospel says knock out the most challenging parts first. Yes, that's one of the techniques as well. We can knock those out first. So when you create manageable chunks, you look at this, this list over here to the left. So it kind of gives you some of the chunks that you can put things into and not over scheduling, but putting things in or putting things into a overly demanding um, timeline for yourself. That can be a part of feeling overwhelmed and noticing that um, the effects on how it, your, it affects your pro productivity as well. So with the example that we talked about earlier, if I had written down an idea when I woke up along with a note and I have it outlined and you know for today, and I have all of my steps on it, like you see here on the left, then when I sat down to work, I would knew I would know exactly what I needed to do to create and start outlining for my story. All of that would be, it would be pretty understood if I did it within the chunks that you see there on the left. So you see that it starts with the story outline for a dream you had, and then it lists some of the things that were in the dream. Then you write the forest details the next day and more descriptors of the hole, the 40 foot hole. And the next day you're gonna brainstorm the characters in each scene. So it's just, it's just taking it step by step allows you to really digest the assignment that you have for yourself and understand what, you, what you're expecting for you. So you can leave yourself a note to do the chunks and, and kind of get everything into manageable parts for yourself. I really want you to kind of understand what's working for you too. So like I said, there are some tips in, workbook, in the workbook for you um, to explore and see some ideas that may work in order to understand your time management and kind of get a hold on what will work for you and what you're comfortable with. And we tend to go with some, some simple, easy to implement ideas, but there are a ton of ideas and apps for us to try as well. Just as creative people, there are so many things that can help you along the way as you go through this process of understanding your time and managing in it as well. So what, what are all 
what we all are kind of currently using is different. Everybody could be using something different. Somebody, some people don't use apps at all. So anyone have a good idea or a system that they use to manage their time currently that they want to share? See, Benjamin says, hey, did you see where I put my phone at least three times a day? Oh, okay. Hey, did you, okay. So is that an app, Benjamin? Is that an app? You just be losing your phone? <laughs> What is the, hey, where did you see where I put my phone? What is that? Oh, Harold says have, Habit Hub. Oh, that sounds good. I don't think that's on my list. Andrew says I set alarms for different things and I have to keep, have to do to keep time. I do that too. I set alarms, Andrew. That's a very good uh, idea. Benjamin says it was a, in the screen share. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Benjamin. T Lauren says, I don't use an app, but I use a whiteboard. So that's good. It's something. Some of us don't need them, but I know the alarms work really well for me. So if anybody else uses them, these are some of the apps that they have available. So some of the popular apps they have are Evernote. Where is that cursor? It keeps disappearing. So we have Evernote, Remember the Milk, Toggle, Rescue Me, Todoist, Forest, uh, Stay Focused. It's called Forest Stay Focused, uh, the one with the plants. And then Loop Habit Tracker. And then we have Focus at Wheel, which is the F at the bottom. So these are some of the different apps that are available to kind of help with time management and kind of get you on the right track. Are any of you currently using any of these apps? I know that somebody said they're using Habit Hub. That was Harold. I don't have that one on here. That's a good idea, Harold. Morgan says, honestly, my brother keeps me on time and helps with my schedule. Well, that's very nice. That's nice. So these are just some ideas for you. Of course, knowledge is power. So only, but it's only power if you put it into action. So trying to force yourself into someone else's system will only leave you frustrated. Like I told you all before, you got to get your own thing and get your own stuff that works for you and your schedule in the way that you think, create, move. So be sure to be sure that you are creating a plan that works for your peak performance time and your current life circumstances and your schedule. And again, it makes um, it may take some experimenting and, and toward, you know, you got to tweak it here and there um, to make sure that you're doing what works for you. Um, but there's no time to experiment, no better time to experiment with your time than your academic journey, because it really gives you a good opportunity to practice. And we all know that practice makes perfect at some point where it makes it better. So I hope that you can take advantage of this opportunity in order to explore and find a system that works for you, okay? And this week, we have our discussion board. So this week for your discussion board, remember that your initial post is due by Wednesday. I don't know why this says Sunday, because it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, but it's not Sunday, it's Wednesday. I think this is the old thing. Um, so I'll have to fix that. Time management, um, and I want you to read through it. Time management is not, not only a personal matter, but it also plays an important role in all aspects of the entertain, entertainment industries. So keeping that in mind, I want you to read through the discussion posts for this week. You know that I'll have a, an example in there for you as the first post so that you'll know, hey, she's looking for this. This is what we're going for. And even the formatting and everything, please, please, please watch your grammar. Make sure you are capitalizing the I's. 
watch out for the run on sentences. If you feel like maybe you, you're not the best at it, try Grammarly. It, you, we, we get the Grammarly that, that comes with the, the schooling. So try it. If you can't log in or if you have any problems, please contact IMT, which is our tech department. So again, our tech department is called IMT. Contact them if you have any problems getting into any of the things that we have available for you, like Grammarly, your, your logins, anything, because I want you to use it because I want you to get in a habit of looking out for what you're submitting and what it looks like and all of that good stuff. So please do that. You're welcome, Harold. And speaking of time management, our discussion post for this week, again, is do <laughs> your post is due by Wednesday, but please do it as soon as possible. See if you can kind of work in there to get it done as soon as possible, as, long, as well as your reply. Everything by Wednesday from first week no later than Wednesday. Your discussion post for this week, no later than Wednesday. And then your download of the workbook, you just go in there and download it. You click, okay, no later than Wednesday. Okay, so set a goal to complete the discussion question and replies before it's due, if you can. If not, no later than Wednesday for the post. And allow the focus for this week to be on your workbook and your fixed commitment calendar within it. If you have any trouble finishing it within the PDF, make sure you put it in the answer sheet for the Word document. If you have any trouble accessing anything, please contact IMT. I will not be able to help you with your specific device. That is not my, that's not one of my powers. <laughs> My powers consist of things that have to do with the actual course and helping you understand the course material. But IMT is very gifted in that area. So Gasso says, why does it say Thursday? Where does it say Thursday? In here or in the uh, LMS? So this week, their discussion board is an opportunity to do some research on what the industry professionals are doing as far as time management. You get to find out what time management, um, how time management impacts your industry and bring that insight uh, back to share with your classmates. So that's what you're going to do. Remember that we want you to respond to your classmates and not to me because it's about you getting to know each other. Um, we hope that you can find um, that something that resonates with you and gets you excited about some ideas within your particular industry. We want to know what you learn. Summarize your findings and tell me um, the key takeaways from your source. And also, how can you apply this to your life? What changes may you be able to make or need to make? And uh, how you can use the information moving forward. So those are, some of the, those are some of the big things that we want to think about. Oh, and the LMS. Yeah, just do Wednesday. I don't know. I'm going to look, but just make sure it's in by Wednesday because I, I asked, but I'm not sure if something changed, but we'll, we're going to see. Just try to make sure it's all in by Wednesday. Thank you so much, Gospel. I appreciate it. Barbara says, check your time zone compared to the, yeah, the Pacific Standard Time. It may be that. Trevor says it might be time zone. Yep. Okay. All right. And Harold says, so we have to put the want to do's in the calendar. No, you put the want, you, you put the want to's in the list, but what you're putting in the calendar are the fixed stuff. And then in the free time, you're going to, you're thinking in your head, I can do my want to do's in the free time. However, in the calendar, you're just going to list it as free or available. So if you're doing the available, unavailable, then you just put available, unavailable. But if you're doing, a, you know, oh, school, this, that, kids, homework, shower, whatever. Usually showers aren't even long enough to put on the thing, but some people take long showers, I don't know. But um, so you just put in there what you're, the stuff that you have to do if you want to put the actual task, you put the, your, your have to do's or your need to do's and then in the free time you'll just put free okay you guys have some great questions i really appreciate you asking them anybody uh now that we've gone over the rest of the assignments and the key things for this week anybody have any questions 
That's all. So this week, your live question will be, what time management tips would you like to try? And you'll remember, I have to get, I have to wait for the video to download and then I upload and then, but your question is already there. So if you happen to be in the question and you're not able to finish putting your answer in, it's because I'm, the video downloaded and now I'm uploading the thing. So it does that. So just in case you had any questions about that. But after attending the live class, live class and watching the recording, you're going to read the eight tips on time management that is in the live um, in the live class recording area. So it'll be 2.1. You're gonna read the eight tips on time management using the infographic <clears throat> below. That's that's there below, and then you're gonna click. Hello, can you guys see me? This thing, I don't know. Um, then you're gonna click to I learn to learn each uh, more about each of the tips, and then you're gonna respond to the question in the completion field below. So again, it's which time management tips would you like to try? So that's your live question for this week. Does anybody have any questions? Questions? Question? Question? Anybody? We're good? I think my computer got hot. Anybody have any questions? Okay. So if you don't have any questions, you guys can go ahead and start doing your post or whatever you would like to do at this point. In order to get some of your stuff done, think about your time management <laughs> and get it done. <laughs> so if you have any questions, though, please don't hesitate to message in the LMS or you can call or text. I'm available if you want to call. Sometimes I'm available after my after after my uh, office hours, but my office hours are 930 to 130 Monday through Friday. But you can call anytime. I would probably answer. If I don't, just text me. Uh, or you can leave it in the LMS. Either one, it doesn't matter. So T. Lawrence says, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome, T. Lawrence. You're welcome, Andrew. You all are very welcome. You're welcome, Sadie. It was hilarious. Uh, yeah, I snort when I laugh. <laughs> thank you. Let's see. Rizal, you have a great, oh, you have a great night as well. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording. Thank y'all.